All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Doc Shell. Welcome to the Dr. Test Prep YouTube channel. If you have never been here before, I actually want you to stop the video in about 10 seconds and go watch the four pillars video first, as well as watch the video that connects about how Dr. Test Prep supports your work in Khan Academy. Those are way more important than what I'm going to show you right now. Now, as this is um, the first video, I just want to remind you that when you click in the description to open up the graphing calculator, it'll look like this. This is the link I've put in. You have to manually click choose assessment and then college board so that you'll see the actual calculator that you're going to be using on your test. All right. Um, if you are following along with Khan Academy, we are doing unit four, advanced math, and this is lesson one. We're looking at some examples that are basic examples. If you bought my book, which is $14.95 on Amazon, we are on page 58. If you didn't buy my book, no worries, get paper and pencil and still open up the decimals calculator. All right, which of the following is not equivalent to 15x squared minus 30x? Now, I don't know if you're gonna see not questions, but I wanted to put one in here just in case you will. This is one that most of you probably could do without using the calculator, but I'm still going to demonstrate how I would use the calculator just so that you can get used to the patterns that I use. Our first um, expression is 15x squared minus 30x. In this case, I'm going to just write f of x equals 15x. I use the shift 6 button to get the squared um, minus 30x. You also can use down here is this keyboard and you would just click the A2, okay? So this graph, this red graph is what we want to match to. So the thing is, is it says which one does not match to that one. So instead of um, just typing them all out, I like to write like choice A, I like to write A of X because, and then I just write everything else, 5X, 3X minus six, so as you can see, they're the same. The reason why I like to do that, because this next one, what do you think it's going to be? <laughs> what do you think it's going to be? V of X. The reason why I like doing this is because I feel like it's a lot easier to keep track of like which equation you're doing. Because as the equations get more difficult, it, you can lose your place. And so that's why if you just use um, the format of A of X, like your first function, your main function is f of x, and then each answer choice would be a of x, b of x, c of x, d of x. Um, I like doing it that way. And it only takes like an extra three keys. Okay, so right now we know the answer is d because our red, blue, green, and purple graph are all exactly the same. And I'll show you that in a second. Let's type in the d of x graph just to prove it. Okay, and we can tell the d of x graph certainly doesn't match. I'm going to turn off the blue, green, and purple. And so our original graph is the red graph. The black graph does not match. So because of that, the black graph is the correct answer because that's the one that's not equivalent. If I turn on each one of these, red and blue are the same, red and green are the same, and red and purple are the same. All right, let's look at the next one. Um, how do we delete everything? We click this little gear, and then we just click delete all. And now we're ready for our next question. What is the factored form of 9x squared minus 33x plus 18? I want to just take a second to emphasize what factored form means. Factored form means that we can't break it down any much. So for example, think of it as like prime factorization. If I have the, just the number 24, I know I can break it up to 2 and 12, but that won't be the completely factored form because I could break 12 down again to three and four. I could break four down again to two and two. So when we you see factored form, it wants it to be like, you can't break anything else down anymore. And it won't really matter for question two, but it will matter for question three. All right, let's take a look at question two. So I've got my original function, f of x equals nine x. I'm doing shift six to do the squared. I'm telling you, you will save time if you get used to these keyboard tricks plus 18. Okay, there's our original function. This is the one that we want to match. I'm going to do a of x equals 3 times x minus 2. You don't have to do spaces. 3x minus 3. Okay, we can clearly tell that's not the same one. So I'm just going to do the next one. b of x equals 3 times x minus 3. And then 3x times 3x minus 2. And there we go. 
The red and blue graph lie perfectly on top of each other. They have the exact same um, X values, uh, zeros. Let me show you one other thing I want to just, it's kind of cool. For your first function, if you long press whatever color that ball is, like long press it, press it, it gives you the opportunity to change the thickness. I often encourage students to just change the thickness because it makes it easier to make sure that like the blue goes right on top of the red. Okay. All right. So now this next one, so we're looking at choice B was the correct answer. For this next one, we're going to have a lot of graphs that look the same. And then we're going to have to judge, does this make sense? Okay. So our original equation is 24x squared, shift two or shift six for the squared, minus 48x plus 72. Now, if I look at letter A, I notice that letter A has two, four, and six inside, and all of those are divisible by two. So I, A is probably not my right choice. If I look at letter B, the inside coefficients are one, two, and three. Those are prime numbers. Those can't be factored down anymore. So it's most likely B without me typing anything into Desmos. If I look at letter C, I see four, eight, and 12. Again, four can go into all those numbers, so it's not completely factored. If I look at letter D, I get two, four, and six. All of those are divisible by two, so that's not completely factored. So what, the reason why I'm showing you this is in the previous examples, I just went A, B, C, D, and I typed A, B, and C into Desmos. But it will save time if you can think analytically and say, okay, which one should I try first? And so the one that makes sense to try first is letter B. And this is why it's helpful if you get in my habit of typing whatever letter it is into Desmos so that you can just match it up. So I'm going to type in letter B and see if it matches the graph. And we don't see either graph. So it's like, Doc, what's going on? Well, you have a couple options here. One option is you can just keep scrolling out. But the option I like to do is I like to go to this little wrench and I notice that like I see 72. So I'm gonna change my Y value to 100. And then when I do that, look what happens. I can clearly see that my green graph is matched perfectly on top of the red graph. So that is the one that is the most factored, okay? And as I put on the bottom, while this book focuses and my YouTube videos focus on helping you um, use the Desmos calculator, the College Board does say, like, you won't necessarily need the calculator for all the examples. Like, if you think of um, Unit 3, Lesson 10, we didn't use the calculator, I think, at all. So um, just like for number three here, I was showing you, like, yeah, we can check in the calculator, but we can also think logically, which will save us a little bit of time. All right, let's move on to the next one. So in um, this video is coming to a close, but in my next video, I'll be going over unit four, lesson one, but this time talking about the harder examples, which are on page 59. All right, thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.